okay let me quickly introduce you uh, the IRC loading conditions so see here this is about design of bridges right so the most common types of reinforced concrete bridge decks are a slab type B the T beam type with cross girders the RC slab type deck is generally used for small spans. This type of superstructure is economical up to the spans about 8 meter. This was already discussed in types of beams, but let us review that. Slab decks are simpler for construction due to the easier fabrication of formwork and reinforcements and placement of concrete. The slab decks are supported on the two opposite sides on piers or abutments. So the T-beam and uh, slab type decks are generally adopted for the spans range of 10 to 25 meter for longer spans the dead weight of the girder becomes too heavy and to reduce the dead weight moments pre-stressed concrete bridge decks are most commonly used the t-beam uh, deck comprises of the continuous slab cast monolithic with longitudinal t girders and cross girders spaced at regular intervals i will show you the figure here this these are the t-beam this is like t right so the t shaped structure there is a T-beam. See here. Analysis of design of slab decks. Let us see how should we analyze them. First one, slab spanning in one direction. One direction spanning. See here. For slabs spanning in one direction, the dead load moments can directly be computed by assuming the slab to be simply supported between the two supports. Bridge deck slabs have to be designed for IRC loads. Indian Road Congress prescribes some load, uh, some specifications while calculating the live loads. So we have to take them into consideration. Specified as class AA, class A, depending on the importance of the bridge. Class B also there. Class B is also there, but we consider only class AA and class A. The different classes of IRC loads specified in IRC bridge bridge codes are shown in figures. So I will. Uh, show you the figures uh, for slab supported on two opposite sides the maximum bending moment caused by a wheel may be assumed to be raised by so all these can be uh, seen in design guidelines but let us see only the IRC see here this is to calculate effective depth effective width of the slab so this is the formula all the parameters are given here just look at them you will understand this is very easy and I will share the document and see here for values this is for class a these are all the conditions for class a type of loading see here first one says that uh, this is notes for figure this figure see here the nose to tail spacing between two successive vehicles shall not be less than 90 mm that means this is a vehicle right this is a vehicle tracked vehicle this is not a wheeled vehicle this is a tracked vehicle like uh, military tanks military war tanks that will move like this so for such uh, for such vehicles the distance between vehicle to vehicle is 9000 uh, he is the tail of the vehicle this is the nose of the vehicle that should not be less than 9000 mm that is 90 meter this is not mm that is meter corrected for multi-lane bridges and culverts one train of class AA tracked or wheeled vehicles whichever creates uh, uh, severe, severe conditions shall be considered for every two traffic lane width. So you will understand this easily and no other live load shall be considered at any part of uh, part set uh, of the set two lane width carriageway of the bridge when the above mentioned train of the vehicles is crossing the bridge. So it is assumed or otherwise it is a condition that there is no another live load shall be considered while moving of these type of vehicles which has uh, which were already mentioned here this is our class a a loading this is longitudinal section these are the consideration this should be the length uh, the lengths and the weights are very very important to us while designing see here yeah, this the row is this is in contact with three 3.6 meter up to 3.6 meter it is con in contact with road this vehicle see here the total length is given as uh, total length of the vehicle is 7200 so all the lengths are need to be remembered see here this is the carriage width this so this is the longitudinal section this is the elevation these are the wheels from the wheels the load is being transferred to the road that is 35 tons from the each wheel it is being transferred to the road for this tracked vehicle between the uh, between the wheels the length is this please save this image 
and next one so that is for tracker vehicle that's over now we have to talk about wheeled vehicle so the wheels are like this four wheels the heavy vehicles so this is elevation elevation these are uh, the distance between the wheels should be like this from here to here from here to here here to here here to here so along the carriageway this is the road so in this direction the vehicle is moving in this direction see here. in this direction the vehicle is moving so this is the elevation this is the plan this is plan the vehicle is moving in this direction and the distance between all the points should be like this so these distances are very important to us and see here this is the elevation we can see the tires the tires are imposing the load on the road like this 3.75 external wheels are transferring 3.75 tons and internal wheels are transferring 6.25 tons like that so see here maximum loads for the wheels uh, vehicle shall be 20 tons for a single axle 40 tons for a bogey of two axles placed not more than 1.2 meter centers see here the minimum clearance it is denoted by uh, between the road face of the curb and the outer edge of the wheel of the track this clearance is called as c so the values are given here please save this image the values are very important please save this image the values of k this is for initially we have seen a formula right for this in this formula they are giving k values please ignore that for the time being we can see that in design part uh, let us continue with IRC loading now. See here, Axel, this is also for. See, here. this is for IRC class A and B type of vehicles. So, if you understand the image, all the values are you will understand all the values here. Also, clear two clearances are there F and G. Just read them out, you will very understood, uh, you will understand very clearly. So see here, the minimum clearance between the outer edge of the wheel and the roadway face of the curb and minimum clearance G between the outer edges of passing or crossing the vehicles on multi-lane bridges. See here, this is a F uh, and G, two clearances are there and the values are specified here. And now, here this is like train type vehicles. So here you can observe, uh, I have given you the diagram class A and B loadings in the same diagram I have given you. This diagram is very important to us in order to calculate the loads. See here. This is the train type. The dis uh, distances are mentioned here. This is 2.7, 1.6. This is 2.7 from the front wheels. This is, uh, these are 2.7, 2.7. And the back wheels, this is 11.4, 11.4. And from the trucks, all are 6.8 tons for class A loading. Class B loading, this is 1.6 front wheels. This is 6.8 back wheels. And all remaining wheels are 4.1 tons are uh, transferring to the road. So see this. This is actually in order to find out uh, the, uh, the lengths. That's all. The lengths and distances are very important in order to calculate the span length while calculating the loads. These are very important while design. Please understand the images and read uh, read this description. That is very important. Sometimes we consider, you know, uh, even if we consider class A building, uh, class A vehicles, class A type of loading, uh, then we have to already uh, sorry, we have to also. Uh, take into consideration the class A loadings because even the class A is ultimate and the secondary one is class A loading and the next one is class B loading. Even class A is ultimate. Cla sometimes class A loads are also heavier than class A. So we have to consider class A loadings also while we are talking about class A loadings. So let us see in the design problem. But uh, understand the images and read the description.